Hello and welcome to Tbilisi, the capital of the Republic of Georgia. The name Tbilisi, it means place of warm waters or place of warmth, which is very appropriate because behind me you see these domes. These are the sulfuric baths and there's one right here. So underneath me, there's naked people getting warmed by these warm baths here in Tbilisi. Today, we're gonna walk around the old Tbilisi and we're gonna take a look at some of the stuff here. So join me as we explore Tbilisi. The city used to be called Tiflis, and then in 1936, the name was updated by the Soviets, but some countries still refer to the city by the old name, and there's many places in the city where you'll see the old name. As I'm here in Old Tbilisi, the area with all the domes and the sulfur baths, there's a river running through this area, and we can see there's kind of these old walls where this river is, and I guess just a few minutes walk, there's a waterfall, so we're gonna go check that out. So you've got kind of this old castle feel as you're right here in the center of Tbilisi. So there's a mosque right here in this area too. You can see the minaret behind me. And then this is actually a bathhouse, even though it looks kind of like a mosque. The alphabet is really interesting here too. When I look at it, I see kind of a mixture of Roman, like you have the individual characters, kind of like the Roman alphabet. And then I see kind of like Arabic because everything is kind of curved together. So maybe that's what happened. Maybe nobody really knows. And the language isn't really related to anything else, but inside of Georgia, I think there's four languages. So they have kind of a main one maybe that everyone understands and then there's a couple other ones that you only understand if you're from that area and you learn them as a child. As I'm walking back to where this waterfall is, there's a slight smell of sulfur in the air. But yeah, the place is really beautiful. I mean, Tbilisi is a great city. There's lots of nature. The city is right in the middle of these mountains and there's so many trees. The trees feel very alpine to me. And speaking of nature, you can see there's a waterfall and there's these canyon sides around this river. It's very beautiful. It's just right here in the middle of the city. But you can see that also, I guess you can't go back there right now because of danger of falling rocks. So they've got it blocked off, even though there's kind of some nice walkways and stuff that would normally go back there. I've headed out of the canyon and just up the stairs and I'm already kind of at the base of this fortress. And I think also the entrance to the botanical gardens are right here. So we're gonna check out these gardens, which would be the top of the waterfall, I think. To get inside the botanical gardens cost four Georgian lari, which I would say is probably about a dollar twenty or a dollar fifty. I definitely say that we are on top of the waterfall here and the walls of that canyon that we were just in is right over here. This is my first time in the botanical garden. It looks pretty big and I imagine it's a nice place to come for a walk. Maybe a quiet place to think. Here's the base of a zip line. There is the top of the zip line, which is across the chasm. The river's down below. I can hear the river down below. And then over here, we have a awesome view of Tbilisi. But really probably the best view is over there in the fortress. So let's head over there because we are walking through the botanical gardens. This is a really nice view of the back of the Mother of Georgia statue. So on the other side of this hill, of course, it's overlooking the city and she overlooks the city. And that I think you can get to once you cross over and you're up on that fortress. So we'll keep making our way over there. As we are walking through the Botanical Garden, maybe it's a good time to talk about how lush Georgia is and how good of a growing season they have here. Here in Georgia, they have all kinds of fresh produce. I've seen a pomegranate tree. I've seen a kiwi tree. In the stores, they are selling Georgia peaches, plums, cherries. They have 500 varieties of grapes. And actually, they are the oldest winemaking country in the world. Archaeologists verified that, and their winemaking has been traced all the way back to 8,000 years ago. There's also great Georgian bread here. They also grow walnuts here and my airbnb host invited me in for tea and they had some homemade cherry syrup that his mom had made and that was really good i've walked kind of up the hill i'm on the outside of the fortress i'm still inside the garden so we'll go down the steps and we're almost back to the front here and then we'll head to the fortress the garden is supported by turkish cooperation along with georgia here you see the two flags by the way, the flag of Georgia, the cross in the center is for Christ. And then the four crosses are for the four apostles, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because Georgia is a Christian Orthodox nation, over 80% of the people here are Christian. 
We've made our way out of the botanical garden and now we are ascending the steps to the fortress here. The garden is nice if you want to, of course, walk through a garden. So right here, this is a bath and that was kind of on the same level as the waterfall on the river. And honestly, it wasn't too bad to find my way to walk up here, go to the garden, and then here's some steps out of here. The entrance to the fortress is behind me, and now we are afforded some really, really awesome views of Tbilisi. Here in the foreground, this is part of old Tbilisi, although it kind of spans a little bit farther. Here's the river, the Kura River, the banks of the river, basically non-existent, just some cliff faces. Uh, over here, this is the Peace Bridge that actually transmits the word peace into outer space using Morse code. I'm inside the fortress now. I'm on the side overlooking the botanical gardens and the view is basically straight down at this point. As you can see, there's a lot of places to climb up the walls, go up these little stairways, get some amazing views of Tbilisi. Although this is definitely a good leg workout here to climb up this way, I have a feeling it's a lot easier to go this way. Well, we kept climbing. Now we're kind of on the second level of the fortress here. I think there's maybe one other overlook over here. But yeah, some really nice views. Cool breeze today. Climb to the top of this vantage point. There's some really great views up here, of course. Another place where there's great views is actually over here. There's a funicular that goes up this hill and you can go on top and on top there's an amusement park. And there's this really interesting, it looks very Soviet style tower to me. I wish you could actually go up the tower because it looks like there's some points along the way where there's like some rooms and stuff, but that's not open to the public. Like I said, there are good views up there. There's a Ferris wheel up there too takes about maybe 10 to 15 minutes to walk down from the inside of the fortress. You go up to the front and then you go on the outside and there's the cable car. And then there's this path that goes to the mother of Georgia statue. You can really see how beautiful Tbilisi is. It's just tucked inside of the Caucasus mountains here. And you can see that the cable car terminates down below on the other side of the river in a park. So the mother of Georgia behind me now, looking out over Tbilisi. And then on this other side, on the back side of the hill, we have the botanical gardens. You can see the base of the statue there. You can walk out in front and get a view, see what mother of Georgia is looking over. In one hand, she holds the cup. In the other hand, it's the sword. Cup is for friend and the sword is for foe. As I'm walking down the hill and going back into the city, a lot of people speak Russian here, as Georgia was once part of the USSR. And also I think there's a lot of Russians here currently because of the war in Ukraine. And the issue there is it makes a lot of the people of Georgia nervous because of course Putin uses the fact that if there's a lot of Russians in some place, he can use that as an excuse to invade and protect his people. At the moment, Georgia is 20% occupied by Russia. And also in 2008, there was a war between Georgia and Russia. So there's ongoing tension there. So here's what looks like a old church where the roof is caving in. And by the way, yesterday I was in some other parts of Georgia and I found this abandoned Soviet spa where it was honestly really beautiful looking. You could imagine how beautiful it would look when it was in operation but it hasn't been operation probably for over 30 years. So there's all kinds of vegetation and trees and plants growing inside of there. I made a video about that. I'll put the link in the description in case you want to check it out. We're now on this popular street where there's this famous kind of tilted clock and next to it is the oldest church in Tbilisi, which is right here. And directly across from the oldest church, there's a good Georgian restaurant. I've eaten there a couple times. They have some good Georgian food, so I do recommend that. 
Behind me, it's the clock tower. It looks like it's kind of old, but it was actually constructed in 2010 out of old materials. So it's a piece of modern art. And then on the side here, there's the entrance to an adults only puppet show. The guy who made it was of course an artist, but he was also a puppeteer. And as you can see, the clock tower itself is kind of tilting. And the symbolism there is that a person's life is never straight but usually there's someone who's supporting you. So he put this support beam on the side to symbolize hopefully that one person that's supporting you as your life continues, even though it's not straight. At the top of every hour, there's an angel that comes out and rings a bell. And then at noon and at 7 p.m., there's a little puppet show that comes out of the doors below. Like I said, they've got a lot of fresh bread here. And one of the famous Georgian foods is kachapuri, which is this cheesy kind of bread. And a lot of times they have a filling in it. There's a kachapuri you can get that has kind of some eggs in the middle and it's shaped a little bit like a boat. I'm making my way now to Freedom Square as I'm kind of next to probably the main street here in Tbilisi, certainly one of the main streets. It's about a 10 minute walk from the clock tower. Earlier today, I was walking to Freedom Square, kind of similar to how I'm going now. And I recognized someone. I recognized my guide, Daniel is his name, <laughs> from the Sofia communism tour when I was there like two months ago. I immediately recognized him. I said, I said Daniel, Daniel. He's like, yes. <laughs> so I happened to run into him today and wait, it gets better. Last week I was walking and I recognized a woman. I wasn't sure where she was from, but I, I thought about it. And then as she was kind of passing me, I was like, oh, she was on a free tour with me. And later I remembered it was the free tour in Albania. And I was 99% sure that was her. After I saw her, I thought, oh, I should have stopped and double checked, I guess, just to see if my memory's working correctly. So today when I saw Daniel, I was ready. And I said something right away. Freedom Square is just across the street and then next to this busy road here we have the old city wall and it's a situation where they didn't realize the wall was here until they were digging out around here and they found it and now they've uncovered it and they've been I guess building around it or they were already building around it but they've dug it out and they've preserved it. There's a subway and there's some shops right where that wall is and there's actually a door where you can go through and you can just slip back and get behind these shops and then you're in this Georgian neighborhood here in Tbilisi and it's perfectly quiet you can hear there's really no traffic even though just on the other side of these buildings is that super busy street so you can see here in old Tbilisi a lot of these facades on these buildings is not very well maintained and that's because the government will actually come around and renovate those in order to maintain and preserve the authenticity of the buildings but as you can imagine it doesn't happen very often and only a few places get updated from time to time. And the joke is they get updated right before the elections. So I guess there's an election coming and maybe some of these places will get updated. I've left the quiet Georgian neighborhood and arrived back here in Liberty Square. Behind me, you can catch the hop on hop off bus. And then in the center of the square, there's a pedestal. And on the pedestal, it's St. George which no, Georgia is not named after St. George. They put that there kind of because the country is Georgia and they said, well, how about St. George? We'll put him there because guess what? That pedestal was there and someone else was standing on it for 70 years. And who do you think that was? And I'll give you a hint. Remember, Georgia was in the USSR. And I'll give you another hint. No, it wasn't Joseph Stalin. It was Lenin. Lenin was standing there. And after the Soviet Union collapsed, they gave Lenin the hook and got him out of there, which was probably in 91. And eventually they put St. George there in 2006. Well, we did it. We walked around here in Old Tbilisi. We got up on top of the fortress area and we were able to see the views here and see how beautiful it is here. And I told you Tbilisi was beautiful, but as always, let me know what you think of Tbilisi and the rest of what we saw here in Georgia today. Or if you just want to say hello, feel free to do that in the comments below. I love hearing from people. So until next time, from Tbilisi in the Republic of Georgia, thank you so much for watching, or as they say here, Madloba. See you next time.